Welcome back. Democrats may be feeling good because polling shows them ahead, but if 2016 taught us anything, the race is not over until the votes are counted. But with millions of people already voting, the race is hardening fast. Democrats want to keep the focus on the president's handling of the coronavirus, as was evident when I spoke this week to Democratic Congressman Ted Deutsch. And there are all across South Florida and all across the country, grandparents who literally uh, went months and in some cases still haven't seen their grandchildren for months because they've been in isolation to try to stay safe, uh, who, are, who are desperate for, uh, for the kind of family contact that they deserve. For him to say, don't take this seriously, when we've seen the, the devastation that this disease has caused so many families and our economy, um, and people, first responders who put themselves on the, put their own lives on the line, um, it, it's, again, ultimately, this is an election. The one thing that's been made clear this week is this is an election between one person who, in Donald Trump, who cares first and exclusively about himself, his poll numbers, his reelection chances, and how he appears on TV, and one person in Vice President Biden who cares about the United States and how to lift up all Americans with a, a plan to help us get through this virus, build back better even than we were before, uh, and, and show respect and bring unity to our country. That's the difference. And, and it's, it's never been uh, any, it, any clearer than it is right now. Well, there are some policy issues, and I'm curious, watching the, the debate during those moments when there wasn't just chaos, one thing that emerged was the fact that the vice president simply refused to answer the question as to whether or not he would support adding additional justices to the Supreme Court. You know, why is he unwilling to answer that question? Shouldn't voters have that information going forward so they know what it's going to be? The President of the United States stood on that stage um, as, a, a, as a, a big um, bully, um, disrespectful, uh, and, and who failed on, on the most basic things. The easiest, the easiest question, the easiest thing that, that anyone who holds office should be able to, to do, the easiest question to respond to is if someone says, will you condemn white supremacists? The answer to that question is yes. The president no, couldn't I, do I, it. Okay, I, mean, I, let me just, that. I but, want to, but, I want to know yeah. what the vice president was unwilling to say, which is whether or not he would add justice to the Supreme Court. Right, because the vice president was clear that he's not going to be distracted by an argument that's not part of the Democratic platform. It's not part of, uh, it's not going to do anything right now to help bring them the over 200,000 lives back that were lost because, in large part, because of the president's mismanagement of this virus. It's not going to do anything. A discussion uh, that, like that is a distraction when you have the president of the United States say that he will not respect a peaceful transition of power. Um, let's Let's be clear what the stakes are in this election. You have really serious issues about this election, the future and the future of our democracy, and whether this is a country that will continue to, to respect the rule of law and, and where people respect one another. And you have a question about an issue that that's, as I said, not in the platform, not actively being discussed anywhere in Congress. Um, oh, wait, wait a second. The priorities has, really matter. It has, been, it has been threatened. It has been discussed. Again, I just think it's relevant that if there is an issue out there that could come forward, <laughs> candidates should be asked questions. That's the way a normal campaign right. should be run. And why not just simply address the issue? Will you add additional justice to the court? Will you support eliminating the filibuster? Things along that line, which are very real and important issues. Again, Jim, the president, the, the vice president made clear that uh, that the stakes in this election are so high that uh, that he didn't say the vice president, the vice president didn't dismiss these issues. He said, we're, we're not going to have a conversation about about something that's uh, that's not uh, currently a, a big part of what we're discussing here. And he said that, by the way, he said that um, in at the time when the conversation that everyone was having is about what is happening now, not 
some who may choose to file legislation in the future to expand the number of Supreme Court justices, but instead uh, a president who is trying to ram through uh, in an unprecedented way, uh, trying to ram through a Supreme Court nominee who, uh, in order to help him overturn the Affordable Care Act and take health care away from tens of millions of Americans and take the protections for people with pre-existing conditions uh, away from, uh, from over 100 million people, that's, that's what's happening now. This isn't, this isn't a question about some policy that, idea that someone may have at some point in the future, which, uh, which then President Biden can have a conversation about. This is about a Supreme Court decision now and, uh, and a Senate, including Marco Rubio uh, and, and Mitch McConnell uh, and others, who are showing their true hypocrisy in having one standard, one rule when there's a Democratic president and a completely different rule when there's a Republican president. That's the issue that, uh, that we're talking about when we deal with the Supreme Court. Well, let's turn to an issue that is before Congress, which is whether or not to move forward with additional stimulus uh, as a result of the coronavirus. The benefits have ended for, for pretty much everyone at this point. You know, the PPP money isn't there as well. There's issues with regard to the airlines. Now, the president blew up negotiations with, with you know, his tweet the, uh, yesterday. We're taping this on, on Wednesday, so on Tuesday. But there has been a lot of reluctance by Nancy Pelosi and, and yourself and other House Democrats from moving towards a more of a Republican position. Hasn't there? I mean, Nancy Pelosi seems to want this as an issue to wait oh, until after the election herself, doesn't she? You no, know, I, I, I would respectfully disagree. I, I, first of all, I don't, I don't know what the Republican position is, Jim. It seems to me that the Republican position is to simply say no to people who are facing foreclosure and eviction, no to state and local governments who are at risk of, of laying people off, no to local school districts who need the resources to help protect kids and teachers, uh, no to small businesses, no to people who are unemployed. That's the Republican position. And is there movement toward that? No, there, that's, you're correct in that. There is no interest in turning our backs on people who are still struggling. We knew, we knew that the CARES Act was going to, all of the, the funding in the CARES Act was going to run out at the end of July. That's why we passed legislation in advance of that date, the HEROES Act, to do all the things that I just talked about to help people who are still struggling and to help our economy. Um, the Federal Reserve Chair acknowledged how important it is for us to do this. The Republicans said, this is too much. And so last week, Jim, the House of Representatives passed another bill that's a little bit smaller, that still provides the necessary assistance to help people through this. And again, the response from Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump is no. And in fact, this is the first thing that Donald Trump did after returning from the hospital. The first policy proclamation that he made was stop negotiations, do not do anything to try to provide needed assistance to people who are desperate in our country right now, small businesses that are hanging on by a thread, the unemployed who can, uh, who can barely get by. Let me just um, ask you this. Stop the, Republicans, doing it the Republicans were at basically 1.6 billion or 1.6 trillion. Democrats were at 2.2 trillion. Is 1.6 trillion not, not something? Is something not better than nothing? Dem that the, the way that, here's the problem, the way, it, it's not just this number versus that number. Uh, although, as I said, the, the House passed a second bill last week to, to reduce that number. Um, and if that's what, if it was only about numbers, then when we would be just about there. Um, it's about whether, as the president said in his tweet, he said, stop negotiating, vote for me, vote for me, and then we'll do this after the election. Well, the American people don't care about politics. This isn't, this isn't about whether or not he gets reelected. This is about real people, real people who call our office, who, who reach out to me, who are struggling and they don't understand why Donald Trump refuses to engage, why he tells Steve Mnuchin to stop negotiating and why Mitch McConnell and the Republican Senate won't negotiate in good faith to come up with something to help.
When we come back, we look at a constitutional amendment here in Florida designed to limit the voice and the power of the people. Stay with us.